with the first pick in the 2020 draft, the Cincinnati Bengals select Joe Burrow, quarterback, LSU. One more ride, one more race, we go all out, we don't play. Yo, welcome, 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 welcome back, Hootay Nation, Bengals fans everywhere, ladies and gentlemen. Now today I'm gonna come with y'all with a little uh little conversation video. I wanted to come with y'all with the uh a thing that's been floating around a lot of the, the Twitterverse, the uh the, the NFL stratosphere uh on the internet. Is Joe Burrow uh becoming or is he already the best quarterback in the AFC North? Uh now I really wanted to break this down through four games in the season. Uh, all right, which it's been a it's been a a whirlwind in this in this division at the top at least for the top three teams all top three three and one with us uh, Cleveland and uh, of course Baltimore with Lamar Jackson and them but uh, the Steelers are one and three uh, I think I, I personally think the Steelers will uh, recover Mike Tomlin's an amazing coach as, as we have seen uh, as Bengals fans for a long time so I think he'll find a way to get them to to still win a few games I think we're we're at least a top three or top four division. Um, in the NFL at this point in time, but uh, quarterback-wise, let's go ahead and break this down. So throughout four games um, this season, and I've seen this graphic floating around that uh, it, it shows Joe Burrow next to Baker Mayfield, Big Ben, and uh, Lamar Jackson. And so let's just break it down statistically first. Um, of course, he has the highest completion percentage at 73% uh, completion percentage. Baker Mayfield 65.5, Big Ben 64% completion percentage, and Lamar uh, at only 60. Um, I think that's a testament to, uh, you know, Burrow's um, poise in the pocket uh, at such a young age. He's very, very poised. That's one thing I can say about him. Uh, he doesn't make uh, – he makes most of the right decisions. I'll say that. But, of course, every first or second-year quarterback is going to have uh, uh, those three interception games like the one against uh, Chicago and uh, games of that nature. But uh, it, I think it's it's still a flex to be uh, leading the uh, division in, in completion percentage above – uh, Baker Mayfield, who's um, been been around for a little bit longer than Joseph, uh, Lamar Jackson, who uh, also has been around for a little bit longer and even had an MVP year. Um, I mean, I'm a Louisville fan, so I know more than anybody what Lamar uh, has done and is going to continue to do for football. And uh, Big Ben, who is a, a Super Bowl winner, and even though he's fat and very slow at this point in time, um, you know, you can still say, uh, hey, I've got the highest completion percentage uh, in the division so far, um, if you're making the case for Joe Burrow. Um Nine touchdowns, which passing wise beats everybody. Uh, Baker only has two, I believe. Uh, Big Ben has four, and uh, Lamar has uh, four. Uh, I'm not sure about Lamar's rushing stats. I don't see him on this graphic. Uh, and of course, running is part of being a quarterback, so I can't take that away from Lamar. However, uh, when you look at passer rating, 114 passer rating for Joe Burrow, 89 for Baker Mayfield, 78 for Big Ben, and 89 for Lamar Jackson. Now, Passer rating is a very, very important stat as a quarterback, as we all know. It's one of the biggest metrics we use um, to grade a quarterback. Yards-wise, Lamar does have uh, Joe Burrow and Big Ben and Baker Mayfield uh, by a little bit. With 1,077, Joe Burrow has 988 passing yards, uh, Baker Mayfield with 935, and Big Ben with 1,033. Um, so, of course, that is important to an extent, but they're all in the same uh, ballpark, I'd say. I don't think that any of them really... Uh, outdo the other to a point where you could say anyone's demolishing anyone in yards per se. Uh, but yeah, statistically, I'd say you can. There's a very compelling argument to say, uh, strictly as a quarterback and, and and as a thrower of the football, uh, Joe Burrow is uh, the best thrower of the football through four games at least uh, in the AFC North. And I believe in general uh, in the in the AFC North. I don't believe Baker Mayfield on the level of throwing the football Joe Burrow is and will be at in the future. Uh, I don't believe Lamar is either, and I've watched his entire career. And uh, Big Ben, I believe, I, I think Big Ben should have retired f three, four years ago. So, um, but continuing on, uh, st statistics are not the only thing we use uh, to to judge this. And this is the only; these are the downfalls as to why I think it, there is a compelling argument as well to say Lamar is uh, over Joe Burrow. When you look at schedule, because um, I don't, I, I honestly don't think it's a. And before before I continue on, I don't think it's a competition between Joe Burrow and Baker Mayfield. To be honest. Um, Baker Mayfield's a good quarterback. 
Uh, but I, I think that that as time will tell, I believe Joe Burrow is an elite quarterback uh, with with everything that you want in in a, in a quarterback and a leader of your football team. Yes, Baker Mayfield did uh, take the Browns as far as he did last year, but he has an amazing supporting cast, and Joe Burrow uh, has the same record as him as Baker and Lamar through these four games um, with what I, what can be. Uh, considered some people as a worse supporting cast than both Baker and Lamar are dealing with, even though Lamar, of course, could use some way better weapons. I would say our receiving core is better, but as an overall team, the Ravens do have a squad, um, as they do almost every year. Um, continuing on, though, uh, schedule. Let's look at the schedule, and this is where I think we can get, uh, where, where I think uh, opposing arguments can get uh, Joe Burrows when we're talking about the schedule. Uh, we have played nobody. We have played dog shit uh, teams. We've played the Jacksonville Jaguars, who I actually think are probably uh, one of the best teams we've played, actually, and uh, we they're on four. So uh, that says something. You know, we uh, lost to Chicago, as, uh, as everybody knows. That was a three-pick game by Joe Burrow. Uh, and then beating Minnesota and Pittsburgh, I don't believe that those two are, are great wins at this point in the season whatsoever. Average of very best wins. Uh, Pittsburgh's not looking that good, and Minnesota's not looking great themselves. Um, so looking forward, I mean, we all, we all know that Lamar had the big game against Pat Mahomes, so just that game alone. Uh, and, and then going to Denver last week and beating uh, Teddy and uh, Drew Locke, um, you know, making them be 3-1 when they could have been undefeated at this point. Uh, Lamar is definitely comes to Baker Mayfield, uh, other than opening the season against Patrick Mahomes, and uh, it, although it did come down to the wire, uh, losing, uh, they haven't really played anybody either. I mean, Chicago, uh, Minnesota, and I believe Houston uh, have been their, their opponents. And, uh, yes, they have beat all three. Uh, but they should beat all three. I believe we would beat all three. We, it, I think if we played Chicago again. We would not lose to them again. I think that was a, a bad game by us and a, a great game by specifically Chicago's D-line. Uh, Minnesota, of course, we've already beaten. I think we do it again. Uh, should have blown them out, honestly. And uh, Houston, don't even get me started on Houston. Their quarterback threw, what, four picks last week? Uh, yeah, they're laughing stock. Um, continuing on though, schedule like I said, I, I, Big Ben's not in this conversation. We are not mentioning him with the other three right now. Big Ben is a a big lard of needing to be retiredness. Uh, sorry, Pittsburgh fans, I love you all. Uh, you all are my brothers, uh, soon to be little brothers. Just give it a few years, I promise you. Uh, but yes, <laughs> who day? But lastly, other than statistics and the schedule that have been played throughout these four games, uh, I want to take a look at supporting cast now. Uh, I actually would make the case that Joe Burrow, in my opinion, has the best receiving core in the division. Um, the Browns do have Jarvis Landry and Odell, but I don't think Odell's what he used to be. Jarvis Landry is a, a, a very, very solid receiver. Um, but I don't think that any, uh, even Marquise Brown, um, and, and I mean, who else does he throw to over there? Duvernay and uh, Baltimore. I don't think they stack up to having Tyler Boyd, uh, Jamar Chase, who I believe will be a top 10 receiver in years to come. Um, and T. Higgins went healthy. I don't know if anyone's touching that. And then we've seen, if you want to include tight end as part of the uh, supporting cast, uh, we've seen what C.J. Uzama's done so far. So, uh, And Mark Andrews is, is probably, so far throughout the season, uh, just as good, if not better, than C.J. Uzama. Uh, but C.J. Uzama's just now coming to his own. I think him and Burrow are really developing a connection now that he's the starting tight end. And Burrow has been healthy. And um, Burrow has a connection with Tyler Boyd. Uh, Tyler Boyd's a very underrated receiver. Um, honestly, a Pro Bowl caliber receiver if he can stay healthy uh, in the slot. Uh, you got Jamar Chase, as I said, that's the star. We all know him. Jamar Villas, big guy, uh, a big goat, I should say. And um, yeah, T. Higgins. I mean, they drafted him along with Burrow. We all know what what um, we all we all know what's what T. Higgins can be if he fulfills his potential. So I would make the argument that Joe Burrow does have the best uh, receiving core. O-line wise, I don't know about our O-line. It's the most confusing thing I've ever seen in my entire life. Uh, Jonah Williams is, is, I believe he will be the leader of this O-line for years to come, but we're going to have to see how that plays out for the rest of the year because I don't want to, I, I can't act like I've watched the lines uh, of Baltimore or Pittsburgh um, or even Cleveland like that. Uh, of course, we got at Pittsburgh's D-line pretty good, but um, that that's honestly my only frame of reference I really have uh, going off O-line. So O-lines are to be determined, but if I had to look at receiving cores, I would say we have the best uh, in the division. Of course, that would um, help to, to show as to why Lamar and Baker, if, if you believe, have been uh, not as efficient or as good passing um, this season. Now, looking at defenses. Baltimore has been known to have a great defense. I'm not sure how great it's been this year. 
Uh, I've seen some Baltimore fans on Twitter love their defense, some hate their defense. Uh, it really just depends on what you, uh, on what you, what you like. I said earlier, what your frame of reference is. Our defense uh, is underrated, in my opinion. Very young uh, squad that's really coming into its own. I believe just this season. Um, I believe this is going. Logan Wilson is a stud. I'll tell you that right now. Fifty-five is a stud. He will be the leader of this defense for years and years to come. Uh, but once we get a woozy back, uh, a woozy back, and uh, all the guys, you know, Jesse Bates, when we get him back and healthy, I think our defense will be even better than they was against Jacksonville, where we allowed 14 quick points out the gate. Um, and I honestly do think that there is a single defense in the division uh, comparable to the Cleveland Browns. I mean, the Cleveland Browns defense uh, shined again in week four. Um, the, their defense, I believe, is very, 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 very good. And if they do make it as far as some people think they could could make it, uh, which some people are saying Super Bowl contenders, I wouldn't go against that myself. I think they could make it out the AFC, uh, even with Baker at quarterback. And Baker's, Baker's not a bad quarterback. I'm not saying that. He's a good quarterback. Uh, but if they make it to the Super Bowl, he for shit show will not be the reason. For shit show, Baker Mayfield will not be the reason the Browns make it to the Super Bowl if they do. It'll be Miles Garrett and the boys on the defensive end, along with that running game with Nick Chubb and, and, and uh, Kareem Hunt uh, over in Cleveland. So, um, yeah, the defensive side of the ball, like if we're talking about comparing anything, it's going to be comparing our defense to Pittsburgh's and, and, and possibly Baltimore's. I don't think any division, any ugh, any defense in the division uh, other than the Browns is comparable. The Browns are on a whole other level defensively right now. And um, but I would like to thank the Browns for Larry Ogunjobi. He's been great for us uh, ever since I think he's playing his natural position now, as DJ Reader was referring to. Uh, in his interview the other day. Um, yes, yeah, so thank you, uh, Cleveland, for Larry Ogunjobi. But um, your guys' defense is still going incredible. Props to you guys. It's been years and years of agony for you guys. And us here in Cincinnati, we definitely knows what, we definitely know what years of agony feels like uh, in, in terms of football. So um, I'm, I'm actually very happy to see Cleveland doing how they're doing. Uh, I'll, I'll have love for a lot of your guys' fan base. Even though some of you guys can be twerps, I know we got some twerps over here in Bingo Nation as well. Who day? Who day? Who day? Um, but yeah, so defensively, uh, as I repeated four times, and I'll say it one more time, no one is comparing to the Browns um, when it comes to Baker's supporting cast that he has. So um, Baker has a lot of help as far as uh, what he can use, um, what you can use to, because I mean, defense had. Defense does translate into offense. Offense translates into defense. So when your defense is stopping people the way that uh, his defense had, you should have more than two passing touchdowns uh, through four games in the season. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but, you know, Baker Mayfield is a good quarterback, but he's not Joe Burrow. I believe if we're comparing who the best quarterback in this division is, it's between Joe Burrow and Lamar Jackson. I'd say as of right now, Lamar Jackson is a better overall football player than Joe Burrow. But is he a better thrower of the football than Joe Burrow? No. Uh, and is he a better pocket passer than Joe Burrow? No. Now, an overall football player, though, I'd have to give it to Lamar um, right now um, because he's just proven himself more. I think once once we get a few more games of Joe Burrow in and once the nation continues to really see him uh, in action, we'll know. I think, in, in, like, and I've been saying this, uh, within the next two years, we'll see Joe Burrow uh, become a top five quarterback. I said it, top five. Um, and I believe it'll be it'll be consensus. Uh, but I, I don't think that he's done enough as far as evidence wise for me to put him above Lamar yet when Lamar has, has won an MVP and is uh, still playing at a very, very high level, even throwing the football, which some people don't give him a lot of credit for. But of course, I don't think, like I said, he's not a better thrower of the football or passer uh, or even field general than I'd say Joe Burrow. But as an overall football player, uh, I'd have to give it to Lamar because he does a lot of magic with his legs. But Looking into the future, I would take Joe Burrow as my quarterback. Uh, you should, too, if you're part of Who Day Nation. Subscribe below for way more Cincinnati Bengals content. We got some cool shit coming for you guys now. Uh, sorry for my swearing, uh, but but this is the channel where we don't care. This is a, a, a place for Bengals fans to come to. We're not we're not here to be politically correct. Uh, Cincinnati, uh, love you all. Uh, Who Day Nation, we out. Doses. Who Day, Who Day, Who Day, Who Day.